Hey everyone, this week I thought we'd talk about the world of American companies discovering that going woke makes you go broke. It was recently the 4th of July and for several decades the most popular beer in America was Budweiser, until this year when it didn't even make the top 10. This is all due to that Dylan Mulvaney nonsense where they rebranded the blue collar beer to specifically appeal to men who are also keen to advertise their love for transvesticism. The irony really is they could have just appealed to everybody if they'd used an old picture of Eric Idle dressed up and put some Monty Python quotes on the tins. Nonetheless, this stuff is all the rage right now, and despite the company losing tens of billions of dollars in less than six months, this month also saw Unilever let the Ben & Jerry brand announce that Mount Rushmore was a disgrace, and that huge swathes of land in the Midwest should be handed over to native tribes, which I guess is easy to say when you're living in upstate Vermont like Ben & Jerry do, or Palo Alto or wherever it is these people live these days. It all has the intellectual integrity of me deciding to boycott Niswa salad or refusing to purchase ladies' shoes. Across the pond, more recently, Nat West decided to cash in on both the ashes as well as diversity by putting up a billboard saying, quote, cricket has no boundaries. It literally has boundaries, that's how you score points. More crazily, though, there was the issue that Coots Bank is a subsidiary of Nat West, and Nigel Farage had his bank account forcibly closed. The bank put out a press statement claiming he simply didn't have enough money in it, although that turned out to be a complete fabrication after a dossier was leaked, revealing that they just didn't like his anti-EU politics. This is one of these stories really where you have to argue it by asking what if it was the other way around? You know, what if, for instance, Jeremy Corbyn had his electricity cut off all winter because none of the energy companies wanted to supply him as a customer due to his views on renationalising the grid? Other examples in recent years have been Gillette dropping their tagline, quote, the best a man can get, before the accountants quickly realised that most of the customers in fact had a Y chromosome, or perhaps the removal of the Uncle Ben's rice branding, which I still think was over an argument with the writers of Spider-Man, Uncle Ben being a major character in that story and not actually Asian the last time I checked. One of the leading causes of the recent Titanic accident was the decision by the company to get rid of former Royal Navy staff members because they were all white blokes in their 50s with far too much knowledge about submarine safety and nowhere near enough knowledge of useful things like the plight of North African migrants. And yet despite this woke smoke screen, a woke screen if you may, the attitude is entirely duplicitous. Disney might be very keen to put out films with homosexual characters, but they refilm and re-edit scenes when the films are sold anywhere outside of Europe or the US. The Apple CEO Tim Cook will go on record about the appalling attitude to LGBT people in China, but he also manufactures more than 95% of Apple products there, whilst occasionally putting out some rainbow-themed social media post. At a national level, the US government is somehow even worse, pushing one set of morals domestically and a completely contradictory set overseas. A good case in point could be Joe Biden, who's gone on from playing that banjo player in Deliverance to being president. A few years ago he said that the US had to reduce its carbon footprint and went on record saying that Saudi Arabia would quote pay the price for its poor human rights record before begging them to increase all production. Of course in reality they sided with Russia, they cut production, bumped prices and Biden vowed to quote impose consequences before China eventually was brought in to broker a deal involving Iran as well as numerous human rights abuses. More recently, the Saudis bought out the PGA Golf Tour, leaving those on the left to wonder whether they prefer traditional golf tournaments organised by Donald Trump, or those organised by a country where putting a rainbow bumper sticker in your car is literally punishable by execution. The situation is so beyond parody at this stage that I'm genuinely waiting to see the Saudis' use of crucifixion being spun as an olive branch to Christians and a demonstration of the kingdom's religious tolerance and modernisation. Certainly it would be far less ridiculous than, say, Disney releasing Mary Poppins where the nanny is white and therefore evil, or whatever nonsense the House of Mouse next has planned for us. Currently there's a version of Snow White in production where the character, despite being named after the fact that her skin is as white as snow, is played by a Colombian actress, and the seven dwarves look like a pride rally in New York in a regular size, all apparently because Peter Dinklage personally stepped in and apparently didn't understand that the dwarves in the story were the magical species from German folklore and not people afflicted by dwarfism. You know, who would have thought that Pinocchio telling lies would turn out to be more honest than the corporation itself? Anyway, that's all for now. If you like these, click subscribe. I'm off for a couple of weeks holiday, but I'll be back in September. Bye.